Vande Krishna Foundation presents So how you uh, balance your material and spiritual life? You have a very great guru I know, you know, who is Chandra Swami Ji Maharaj, who was in silence for 30 years. And 32 years. 32 years. He's a very great self-realized master. I've been to his ashram with uh, you know, ji, uh, near, in the, near Dharadun. And uh, you have to meditate. And to meditate in his presence is really to become a bliss billionaire. <laughs> That's our topic today, bliss billionaire. So can you share some experiences with your great uh, uh, guru, please? I met Swamiji in 2001 and again I think um, two people changed my life and one was N.F. Hussain who put me on to that journey of art and now um, and in 2001 when I was actually getting very disenchanted with the world and I was getting very disenchanted with my with, with arts also that I, a friend of mine who was very close to me and who introduced me to Swamiji Again, it's a long story which I, it's difficult to share here on this platform, how I met Swamiji. Um, I suppose it was destiny that I had to meet him because it was my inner calling to have somebody from learn who am I, what am I, why am I here and um, Swamiji just, he, they say when the, when the shisha is right, is right, the Guru calls and I think I got a calling from my Guru. And I saw him for the first time and um, he was walking towards the meditation hall and actually I fell in love with him. I knew I've come to my nest. I I knew that some, some change, sorry, I'll get very emotional when I talk about Swamiji, especially my first meeting with him. And I used to have get visions about this river and in the morning after, it was very dark in the ashram and I never meditated and my friend said he meditated four times and I said, I, I said I'm mad that I'm coming with you to, to because I don't know how to meditate and I told this to Swamiji and he laughed and I said I don't know how to meditate mm -hmm. and he just laughed and after that I think there's been no turning back on this more and more, more and more, more and more wanted to know more and more and it's an amazing uh, experience that he would not speak but as we all say that silence speaks and his silence, silence really spoke to me and to, it speaks to everybody and he would write down and there were so many questions which we used to ask sometimes the answers were like when you are sitting in front of the master there are questions don't come which you must have to experience and uh, sometimes he would write I would ask something and he would say something else and I would say why is he saying this but actually uh, it was connected in some way and that problem that that whatever issue I used to have would get resolved by those uh, over, the, over a certain period of time not, imme not immediately and since you have been to Swamiji, you know Swamiji, you can, you know what it is like. It's, it's, he, he is, um, I would say a perfume, his whole energy is something like a perfume which permeates, permeates the soul and that's how it is and it continues. And he, in fact, what you just now asked me, I, initially I did ask him, ki, uh, many people ask him, many devotees ask him, is how do we, um, get a balance between this world, worldly life and this spiritual life and he never says leave the world or he never says that you are he will always say you are a rehearsed and you have to live that life and you have to but his whole thing is meditate twice in a day meditate and at least twice a day yeah and he was always talks about it's, it's now after so many years it's going into my zahen about about um, he talks about dispassion and he talks about practice that's about Vairag Abhyas. And because to understand these two words also, it's, it sounds very easy, but it's right. not. Because intellectually we understand everything about right. spirituality, but it's it's how much we practice it. Right. So I think he's brought so much of balance in my life because of him. I think um, I I go I'm going more and more within myself. Thank you, Swamiji. It's a long way to go, Vandana. Nobody can, you know, kind of. Yeah, we are all struggling seekers. We are all trying to evolve, but at least you are. You are in the I, I, Yeah, I thank God that I met him. Yeah. You know, he's there, yeah. but I got to me. Yeah. Because in this day of uh, commercial gurus, and uh, Swamiji is a very great realized master, and 
uh, it's very rare to find a yogi like him today. You know? And uh, I don't know about your bliss billionaire or not, but I, I am in bliss when I'm in front of him. <laughs> yeah, he's an amazing great yogi. And like Ramana Maharshi was a great South Indian saint. Ramana Maharshi also was in silence for most of his life. And people would come and sit in his presence and their doubts would automatically get answered. Sometimes we also get that feeling when we sit with, we never knew Ramana Maharshi, but when we sit with uh, Swamiji, we get those, you know, the peace comes uh, automatically and automatically doubts get dispelled. That is the power of a silent yogi. <coughs> so we don't, you know, Swami, the, some of the great yogis said it's not important to, give, to be a platform lecturer. And the silent saints who are doing their tapasya by the vibrations only, they can uplift the world. He is one of those real great uh, so of hidden mystics of the world. The hidden mystics of the world, right, right. He has actually gone beyond his uh, his body, right, and mind. Hmm. He always says, "I did this." He always says, "This body is uh, not ready to go, or this body is not well." Hmm. So he's 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 gone beyond. Uh, he's transcended his body consciousness, right. There was one a big sarya which went through his uh, ankle. What went? Sarya, it's a rod. Achha. Construction time. Mm -hmm. It was a big little hole like this. The whole ashram was crying but he was not crying. Really? He, he's really gone beyond it. Yeah. Do you know about it? No, I don't know about it. I know that Ramana Mashi experienced that he had cancer but he never went to a single doctor and he was always in the bliss of Samadhi and in the last day some operation was done on his um, without anesthesia and something like that. So all these yogis are very remarkable and because we think we are the body and we are so attached to it, you know, but uh, they've gone transcended and doesn't affect them. Uh, would you please give us some tips on art investment? I think, I don't believe in too much of art investment as this, this whole term as investing, investing, which was, which, ha which had kind of um, created so much of havoc here in, in our Indian art market in the early 2000s, 2004 to 2008, I think. Um, Yes, now big money is involved and people have started using this term as investing. I think one should invest first. You should know know what know and read and learn about what you what you want to buy. And there is so much now available on the net. Consult a, your own any any friend who's buying art or who or any gallerist who you believe in. And the most important is that you should love what you buy. Buy from the heart, then buying from the mind or from the ears. Right. Buy from the heart. Right. Because when you buy from the heart, you are loving what you are buying. Right, right. And you will do mistakes. Right. In your art, in your art buying, art collecting journey, everybody does a mistake. I have done so many mistakes. I have so many art which, which is there, but it's there, it's there, it's fine. This is a that this is what it is. But as an art collector, who I have been myself, as art collecting, it automatically then when you buy from your heart, it, you buy ten artists and or you buy a certain kind of artist, and you know over the years you see them them growing. And I always advise many young people who have started buying now that buy of your generation, buy the younger artists because it, mm -hmm. their their pockets are not very high. So mm -hmm. if you buy um. If you buy a master, then you have to have that kind of money, okay, right. that kind of pocket. So buy according to your pocket and according to your pocket, you will get lots of art that you can buy. Mm. Right. Or does she say that if suffering has taken you closer to the divine, it's a blessing in disguise. So do you think there was any, any pain you went through which you think led to your spiritual growth? Well, then in this world, who doesn't go through pain? That's Where true. This? <laughs> this is All of us. <laughs> all, all of us go through a certain kind of pain right. or certain kind of, I don't, I don't call it, sometimes mm. you call it pain but some, I think it's more disappointment, it's actually this disappointment now that I understand it was my own perception, my own thoughts which brought me that kind of, work. and that happens, that happens because now I want to move on to this uh, journey as a seeker, right. so now I understand but yes when you start having, when you have pain or you are disappointed or you feel rejected, you kind of start looking for answers and you get these answers when you when you have a real guru and I had, I, I was blessed to have a real guru. You are very blessed. 
to have a to uh, to have a master in my life right. and i think that uh, brought me closer to the divine and brought me closer to what is actually divine is within ourselves right so that brought me more so that so this whole journey from being religious from the very ritualistic you know i become more spiritual more more going towards inwards and many of the rituals have kind of left yeah. my and like they just dropped away from my life mm mm-hmm. so i think it's a journey which i'm and um, I thank those people, and I thank everybody who helped me go and move towards the divine. Right. Like Swamiji also, um, uh, my Guruji used to make us do an exercise. Blessed those who hurt you. You visualize somebody who has hurt you and send them vibrations of forgiveness and love, and thank that person for coming into your life to help you exhaust your past life karma. So we should always do chukrana, you know. Prasad Guruji. Acha ho raha hai, bahut kripa. Bura ho raha hai, tumhare karam karte hain. So, isn't that a good formula? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I have another new formula called Triple K. Khota Karam Kata. If something negative is happening, you have to do it. Khota Karam Kata. Lock it up. Absolutely. Mm. It's difficult, but it's difficult. It's not easy. The Samatram, the word the Gita talks about Samatram Yoga Chute, the alcohol in the pearls of ups and downs of life. It's, it's good to talk about it. And I, I personally am meditating. Uh, uh, for the past 15 years, but I haven't reached that stage, you know, uh, <laughs> of Samatwa, <laughs> it prepares and detachment. So it's a journey of so many lifetimes, but at least we're trying. You never know, you may, you, you may get it in this lifetime. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> Kripa. 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 Guru Kripa, Ishwar Kripa. Guru Kripa. Both Kripa are very important. Yeah, that's true. As my Swamiji and my Guru says that, I knock at your door, but if your door is not open, how will I come in? Mm. So we have to let our hearts open to our uh, to let that grace come in. Mm. So I think I am very lucky to have that, and blessed to have that grace coming in all the mm. time. Thank you, Rinji. It was so uh, enlightening to have you with us. Thank you, Vandana. And please, for inviting me and and please, uh, we would uh, we, we, we like you know from your guru, um, meditation is such a powerful tool to become a bliss billionaire. So please let's end our session with a joint meditation. Sure.